Tonight, in our United States, at a city hall, the hour approaches 11. But whatever the time or wherever the place, tonight something will happen in a city which may be your home. You'll read about it tomorrow. This is the true-to-life story behind one such headline. I wonder if you could help me. I imagine. What's the trouble? My sister is missing. He came to the right place. I'm going off duty in a few minutes, but if you want to fill out this form and leave that picture, Jones here will put it on the wire. Form? Just give us all the details. Oh. Well, you can fill it out at home and bring it back in the morning. Yes, I think I'll do that. Well, I ought to drop in here more often. Hi, Mark. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, looking for evidence of incompetence among city employees. You're out of luck. I'm only incompetent during working hours. What's your sister's name and uh, physical description? Mary. Mary Considine. She's about my build. Well, already I'm interested in the case. Uh huh. Kid sister? Fifteen months older. She's been living here about a year. This face is familiar. Did you check the morgue? They're open all night. You recognize the picture? No, oh, easy now, easy. That's just one of his routine questions. Um, <laughs> where are you from? Beaverbrook, Pennsylvania. Well, sounds like a nice place. Lots of brooks, beavers, things like that. Miss, when did you last hear from your sister? She wrote two weeks ago from a hospital here, but I checked. They say she was never there. What was wrong with her? I don't know. Uh, let's see the letter. I don't have it with me. Oh, give me a picture then. I'll run a story on it. Help you out, Min. Please, not in the newspaper. Hold it, Mark. Until this case is on file, it's not for publication. As a gentleman of the press, I give you my word. Which is as good as getting a point ticket on the atomic bomb. Crusty monster. How the kids? Bad and good, Mark. See, I'm sorry we can't stop to talk, but I've got the children home without a sitter. You come in in the morning, Miss Considine, with your sister's letter. Thank you. Don't let him get lost. Hey, Considine! Ease your mind. The uh, morgue is just around the corner. Let's check. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm on your side. Look, it's awfully late. And... Exactly. Well, you shouldn't be out alone. Incidentally, do uh, you know anyone else in town besides me? I don't even know you, and I'd appreciate it if you'd leave me alone. Always a good idea to have a friend. I promise you there's no story in this, at least not one that you'll get from me. Well, I'll live in the hope that you'll change your mind. In the meantime... <laughs> what are you doing? But you're being followed. What do you mean? Are you good girl and be quiet or we'll see what's up. Let go of there. Just By the way, I don't think we've met. My name's Sitko. Mark Sitko. I know. 
couldn't sleep, so you just decided to take your gun out for a walk. I'll take that back. You want to bet? What's the idea of skulking around after this young lady? I couldn't sleep, so I just decided to take my gun out for a walk. You got a license for this? Sitko, quit the clowning. Did I say something funny? By the way, have you met the young lady that you're scaring half to death? Miss Considine, meet Mr. Carrick. Cheapest private detective in town. Specializes in framing divorces and frightening little children. Carrick? You know him? Sorry, lady, you've never seen me before. No, but when Mary first left home, my father long distance, an investigator named Carrick, kept sending him money to find Mary. Any comment? The phone book's full of Carricks. At least seven of them. All of them private eye. Come on, give me the gun. I gotta go. You really got a permit for this thing? Very pretty girl. You recognize her? Well, that's me. That's my picture. Collecting pinups, Carrie? I thought you were supposed to be after the other girl. Not that it's any of your business, but... Well, her old man did hire me to find the sister. They're not wanting to spoil a perfect record. You fail. Well, why my picture? Two days ago, your father sent me a picture of you. He tipped me off and I met your plane. Why, Daddy? You're not very smart, Sitko. He thinks maybe this one will lead me to the other one. But you ruined that. Maybe, maybe not. Incidentally, when did you start going in for honest money? I know you're considered a very funny guy, but I'm not one of your fans. You going legitimate is like a vulture turning vegetarian. You're still not getting a smile out of me. You never found Mary? Not a trace. And join the searching party and start earning your price. Now, come on, come on. In the coroner's morgue of every major city is the register, better known as the Jane Doe book. Picture album of the unidentified dead. Accident. Murder. Suicide. Jane Doe number seven. Body found in stolen car, motor running. <laughs> Basement of Paradise Hills unfinished building development. No articles of identification. Cause of death, carbon monoxide poisoning. She wouldn't do it. I hope she wouldn't do it. Autopsy report, female, age about 20, hair brown, eyes blue, recent childbirth. Coroner's finding, probable suicide. Yes? Number 67324. <laughs> winds up the case. You can report to your client now and have him take you off the gravy train. I'll report to my client and let him make up his own mind. There won't be any need for you to follow the young lady anymore. As I said, I take orders from my customers. Good night, Carrie. And if you can possibly arrange it, let's make a goodbye. Careful of this thing, it's loaded. Where are you staying? At the Fenwick. They got a nice little coffee shop over there. Come on. You look like you could use something. Not a very nice welcome to the city, was it? You knew about the baby. Yes. She wrote you that from the hospital. And you say you checked there. They've never heard of her. Do you want to talk about her? I don't know. Might help. Why did she leave home? Neither one of us got along with my father very well after my mother died. Mary was older. She got away first. I see. What did she do when she got here? I don't know. She never wrote much. That's why my father hired the detective. Oh. He wanted her back? I don't think so. He just would never leave either one of us alone. Did she send for you? No. She 
just said she was in the hospital, and I got worried. Well, I... I know it isn't much consolation, but... They say it's not a hard way to go. She didn't do it. She never would have done it herself. What makes you think so? I knew her. Oh, I'm afraid that wouldn't carry much weight with the coroner. Stolen car, carbon monoxide. That's what doesn't make sense. She didn't even know how to drive. Well, you can learn a lot away from home. She didn't kill herself. You better go upstairs, try to get some sleep. I can't sleep tonight. Well, get some rest anyway. You're not going to put any of this in the paper? Not a word. Now, you stop worrying. You think she killed herself, don't you? Why don't you just stop thinking about it? Come on, I'll walk you to the elevator. Hey, Scoop. Why don't you do something for me? Uh, Mr. Sitko, I'm on my way home now. Oh, you'll never win a Pulitzer Prize that way. Check the motor vehicle department, see if there was a driver's license issued to a Mary Considine. Dig up all the back issues of the paper for the past year and see if there was a marriage license issued to that same Mary Cunson. Good luck. While well, you're at it, run over to the Bureau of Vital Statistics. I want a list on all the babies born dead during the past month. Oh, Mr. Sitko. Charlie. Mr. Sitko, this will take the rest of tonight and tomorrow. Tomorrow's my day off. What better way to spend it than by working? Why don't you do it yourself? Oh, because, Scoop, I'm old and I'm tired. Because, well, I've, I've reached a position in life where I can order you to do it for me. Now, go on, get it done. Charlie, if a baby didn't die, where else could it go? I only really know where they come from. I don't know where they go. Give me everything you got on babies. Everything? Mm-hmm. You know, little ones. Mrs. Donner, up. Come back later. A whole lot later. You don't push me around, Punchy. This is important. Nothing is so important for you ever to disturb me at this time of the morning. Absolutely nothing. That's what I said. Absolutely nothing. Go back to bed, Harry. Yes, ma'am. She's identified her sister's body, and now she's shooting off her mouth that it's not a suicide. It wasn't very bright of you. To let her get to the morgue? It wasn't very bright of you to have something there for her to find when she did get there. Well, what did you expect me to do? Let her write a letter to the district attorney? She was a troublemaker. She wanted her baby back. I'd be just as happy if we committed our murders in a state that doesn't have capital punishment. Don't talk like that. I've told you before. You've told me a lot of things. They all add up to a short walk from the death cell if this thing breaks. Why should it? I haven't told you the most interesting part. No. She's teamed up with a reporter from the Mirror. We were all down at the morgue together. Did you serve tea after you told them the whole setup? They don't know anything yet, but I don't like it. What happens if she starts looking for the baby? Have you ever looked for a needle in a haystack? I'm afraid she'll have a little difficulty finding it. No, I don't think you're as smart as the others think. Maybe not. But I'm smart enough to know that you're sitting in the same box with the rest of us. You threatened the girl with exposure. You pocketed your commission for the sale of her baby. If there's a short walk from the death cell, you and I will take it together, right in step. What's the next move? Watch her. Find out what she's doing. I don't think she'll get very far. If she does, we can take care of her. Your solutions are getting monotonous. Always the same. Perhaps. Monotonous, but effective. From now on, she's in your department. I have a lot of back orders to fill. Well, what's the matter? I was just thinking how nice life used to be when I stuck to blackmail and petty larceny. Working all 
night. What are you up to? What are you up, I believe is correct. All right, so what are you up? Big stuff. I may decide to put this paper on a map. Now, that'd be kind of you. No kidding, Noel, it really is big. I'll need a few days. Go ahead. How much can I spend? How much have you got? Funny fellow. Don't walk through any open drawbridges. Good morning, sweetheart. Will you get me the Fenwick Hotel? Hey, man. George Jack. Good morning. You look like you haven't had any more sleep than I have. Sleep is for the upper classes. Only toil and weariness for peasants like us. My marvelous little brain has been busy uncovering several pertinent facts. Your sister was never issued a driver's license. And she didn't kill herself. It's an interesting fact, not necessarily proof. Also checked on all the babies born dead in the past month. All accounted for. Good, legitimate families. She's still alive. How do you know it's a she? Mary told me in her letter. Well, when was she born? February the 22nd. You know you could have saved someone a lot of trouble if you told me all this last night. Let's go. Where are we going? Oh, that's a good question. Come on. Mind if I take a look at that letter now? Yes, I do. Oh, I take it you're not interested in finding the baby or what happened to your sister. Of course I am. But I'm not interested in having our personal problems splattered all over the front page. Who said anything about that? Nobody. But you don't deny it. Granted that I'm after a story. And if I get it, I'm bound to find out things that'll interest you. Well, I don't want the baby starting out in life with a bunch of press clippings for a birthday present. Supposing, supposing I can promise you not to use any actual names in the story. How good is your promise? It's always been pretty good. Oh, I don't know. What if I told you that I already have a pretty good idea of what was in that letter? You see, I, I checked the marriage licenses for the past year. There wasn't one issued to your sister. Well, she could have been married someplace else. Was she? No. Who paid her expenses? Some lady, she said. Mm. And the lady promised to put the baby out for adoption? Yes. Oh, don't act so surprised. I've been reading stories like that all night. Well, I guess you might as well have the letter now. I don't need the letter now. You and I are on our way to see a friend of mine. This is a lot bigger than just marrying her baby. excited about this, Mark. Oh, you read the clippings? Oh, sure. I've known about that for months. Have you been able to read your own paper? I only read my own stuff. That way I know the quality of literature I'm getting. I'd like to help Miss Considine, but you just don't have any evidence. Mac, did you ever know Carrick to be mixed up in anything that didn't smell up the place? I've never gotten anything on him yet. Mary Considine didn't even have a license to drive. How about that? A lot of people drive without licenses. If you'd give me a couple of men for a few days, a I A couple could... of men? Half my force is tied up 24 hours a day, closing down pyramid clubs. The other half is so busy, I couldn't even get myself investigated without a priority. You can't ignore that letter. It's perfectly clear that she fell for a smooth line of charity talk right into the hands of a baby broker. A line in the letter isn't much proof. Maybe she abandoned the baby before... She wouldn't she... have done that. You're making me feel like a first-class heel, Mark. I want you to feel at home. Mark, I don't have the men to throw out on anything as slim as this. What about the fact that she wrote from the Bimini Hospital and that they never heard of her? Maybe she swiped the stationery. You checked on this yourself, Miss Considine? Yes, she'd never been registered there. And nobody recognized her picture? I never thought of the picture. 
You didn't show it to them? Well, why didn't you tell me? I don't know. Well, let's get going. You don't mind if tonight I look into this myself? Not at all. Glad to have you on the staff. If I come in with this whole thing worked out, will you move in? That's what the taxpayers hire me for. So that's it. You learn something every day. Our records show there were five girls born here the night of February 22nd. Miss Tripp tells us you nurses attended them. Kelly, Korchak, Raven, Spence, and Trent. Was this girl one of the five mothers? No, yeah, Mrs. Korchak or Mrs. Raven. I could never forget them. No, that wasn't Mrs. Spence. Kelly or Trent only wished they looked like that. With the birth rate around here, I couldn't recognize any face and connect it with a name. Grace. Are you positive that none of you have ever seen my sister? I'm terribly sorry. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. We're sorry we bothered you all. All right, girls, you can go. I don't understand it. Your sister writes you everything you wouldn't expect her to and does it on phony stationery. Why? If I knew that, I'd know what to do. By the way, what do we do now? Start at the bottom, work our way up. How do we do that? First, we go to a little place that I know and have a drink. Wear your cast iron stomach. Then, if I get the information that I expect to, we put on our track shoes and start running in all directions at the same time. Okay? Cast iron stomach and track shoes. Anything else? Just start smiling like that a little more often. Mint. I'm seen around some time, Mark. I've been patronizing the bars with the uncut whiskey. Oh, are they still operating? I'll have to take it up with my union. Eddie, I got a problem. I should be so lucky as to have your problem. I got a friend. Could have fooled me. I got a friend who wants to adopt a baby. Solid citizen. He doesn't want to go through all the rigmarole, you know, uh, investigations. Well, being a friend of yours, he couldn't stand an investigation. I told him I thought there were a couple of corners he might cut. You don't have no friend once a baby. No. But supposing I did, where would he go? You working on a story? Uh-uh. He's working on a drink and listening to you. It's big stuff, Mark. Well, who's afraid of the big bad stuff? These kids don't play. They take their work seriously. Bully for them. Where do I go? The whole business is run by one syndicate. Believe me, they're dangerous. So I'll pay my life insurance. Did you ever hear of Murray the Boogie? No. Don't tell him I sent you. Oh, where can I reach him? <laughs> you have to find that out for yourself. The condemned man drank a good, strong drink. Not so strong, Eddie. Load it up a little bit, will you? Sure. Grace speaking. Mac, this is Sitko. <laughs> Don't tell me you're yelling for help already. A little. Did you ever run across a character named Maury? Runs a boogie joint? Sure, we have him down here about once a month. You know where I can catch up with him? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna raid him next week. What's the address? Oh, just a minute, I'll check. An address on Maury the Boogie. Mark? Yeah, Mac, this is Sitko. 277 East 6th Street. Got it? Yeah, I got it. What do you want with Murray? I want to put a bet down before you guys get to him. Huh. Tomorrow morning, we'll start bright and early. Where could a guy find Murray? Guys would walk right in the back room and find him sitting there. Stay in about ten minutes. Uh, nice shot. Want to run a few? Uh, sure. Two bits of shot? It's okay. Well, thanks. Go ahead. Uh, Fifteen side pocket. It's one for me. A little out of practice. Stir by a schnoz. That cost me money. Quit worrying, Maury. I'll make it up to you. Tell me what I want to know. 
Why do you want to throw your money away on children? Play the races. I'll tell you what I'll do. You name a connection, I'll make a bet. On a horse that lost yesterday. Shoeshine Sammy, the numbers right. Don't tell him I sent you. Tough fella. I just can't think of the personality you want. Sammy. Just give you any ideas? Well, man, that's my lucky number. And it leads my mental processes to night coat. Yes, and Delaney to Bill Bondsman. Thanks, Sammy. But don't tell him I sent you. Oh, Sammy. I don't know what you're talking about. Baby broker. B-A-B-Y. Now, look, Pally, me, I tell you, I couldn't fix it, not for love, no money. Well, who said anything about love? Like all the rest, you think you can buy me for money? Yeah, Delaney. Well, you're right, but it takes more. Who said anything about no more? Who said anything about Doc Tilson? Maybe a blast of a phone call couldn't fix. Uh, let's say, you got another ten? I'm fresh out of nickel. Illegitimate enterprises work hand in pocket with every shady source of revenue. One racket leads to another. And finally, to an unlicensed doctor practicing behind the front of a Turkish bath. I guess that means me. Tilson's. He just went in. She's waiting outside. Stay on the line, Carrick. Hello? I'd like to speak to Decola. Mrs. Donner calling. Decola speaking. Mrs. Donner. Just received. Why, yes, Mrs. Donner. I was just looking over your check. As payment for protection. I have no intention of worrying whether I'm getting it. Now, if you expect. I don't expect any complaints from you. You stayed open for several years, and you'll continue to remain open as long as I handle things. Well, that's not what I meant. I've just received information that a newspaper man and his stooge are at Doc Tilson's. That probably means only one thing, unfavorable publicity. Unfavorable? I hear you made four sales last week. They don't seem to be included in my check. Perhaps. I've been so busy. Yes. Yes, I'm sure it was an oversight. Just don't let it happen again. Now, if you'll hold on, I'll call Doc Tilson. Well, with those references, something might be arranged to... Dakota speaking. You have someone with you trying to buy? Why, yes. I assume you intended to check with me first? Very definitely. Hold on, Doc. You worry needlessly, Mrs. Donna, and don't forget your check. Hello, Doc. Tell them there's nothing available now but to keep in touch with you. And say, Doc, let me know if he bothers you again. As I was saying, with those references, we'll have to do a lot more checking. Everything was going fine there for a few minutes. Had him wrapped up and ready for delivery. Phone rings, progress stops. Are you sure we're on the right track? We're on the right track, all right, but somebody's throwing a switch. Take a good look at a discouraged man. You're not going to quit, are you? Quit? I don't even know how to spell the word. This means so awfully much to me, Mark. The baby's the only thing that's left of my sister. Oh, we'll find it. I mean her. But we got to start being a lot smarter. That's pretty difficult, considering I'm already about the brainiest guy in town. Why were you at the Missing Persons Bureau the other night? Looking for some people I missed. Lucky for me. No, not yet. We haven't even started. What do we do now? Oh, we use psychology. Whatever that means. Let's suppose you were in Mary's position. What would you have done? 
Afraid that the folks back home might find out. No job, no money, no one to turn to. Yet Mary found a way. The Bimini Hospital stationery and the woman to pay the expenses. Maybe a small private hospital. No, that costs money. Unless she offered to work part of her way. Papers are full of deals like that. Turn for light work, mother to be offered home and uh, medical attention. Private nursery home and exchange services for blah, blah, blah. Any girl in trouble needing friendly advisor, call Mrs. Ellen Ross, Salvation Army Home. Dr. James, private... Hey, wait, the one you just read before this last one. Salvation Army Home. Any girl in trouble needing friendly advisor. Yes, maybe, Mary. What's the matter? Our friend Carrick, he's over there hiding in the bulrushes. No wonder everything's gone sour. I don't think he's the reason. Oh? Uh -huh. I called my father last night to tell him about Mary. Carrick had already told him. Oh, you mean he's still on your father's payroll? Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, I'm tired of having him chaperone us. Hey, fellas, you come over here, please. Yeah, playing cowboy and Indian, huh? So what's yeah. it to you? There's a guy hiding behind a tree about 100 feet up this path. He's a big guy, kind of fat. For a buck, he's an Indian, am I right? For a buck, we burn him with the stake. No, 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 no burning. Just uh, tie him up for a few minutes until we get out of the forest. OK. Spread out, man. Let's go. Okay. Indians, one dollar. Give me Mary's picture. You go back to your hotel and check out. I'll meet you in about an hour at the Salvation Army home. Here, take this. just before she had her baby. Oh. Major, as I've explained, we're trying to do an impossible thing. Any thread of information. That's against our policy. We don't even share our girls' secrets with the FBI. The young lady that you mentioned to me, the, uh, the one that was friendly with Mary, do you suppose that Miss Considine... I do want to help. And I know Dottie would like very much to talk to someone from Mary's family. But, oh, please... In a way, you'll still be helping my sister, protecting her baby. That's all I want to do. Excuse us. you and she said that if the baby was a girl 
She was gonna name it Paula after you. Paula. She used to try to get me to care about what happened. And she didn't like it when I used to say to her, I thought we'd be much better off if we never even saw our children. Then she did want to keep her baby, didn't she? Oh, yes. She used to lie in bed at night when all the lights were out. She'd tell me her plans. Do you... Did she ever mention who the... When you don't want to talk about something yourself, you don't ask somebody else to. Did anyone visit her while she was here? Well, yes. One night, we were taking our regular walk outside, and this man came up to us. And he was with a lady. And she walked with a cane, and... and she passed out Bibles. Why haven't you mentioned this before, Dottie? There was no reason to. Please go on. Well, Mary nudged me to keep walking. And she stayed there, talking with this man she knew. Dottie, could you describe him? No. I guess when you don't like someone, you don't remember them. But once he raised his voice, and I heard him say something like, I know what's best for you, and you'll do it, or you know what. And later, when I asked Mary about it, she just said I was better off being an orphan. And she cried all that night. And then... When Mary left our home, she insisted upon paying for her stay with us. Now I can understand where she received the money. She had very little when she arrived. And, and she left some money for me, too. Me, she just met here. She was so good. Major Ross, would Dottie be allowed to speak to the district attorney? Our girls are not prisoners here. Would you? I'll change. And there must be a change. Costing our girls, luring them away with big promises. Can you tell the boys what those promises are? Well, I always hate to say this to a newspaper man, since I can't speak for the entire Salvation Army. This must be off the record. Oh, Bren has to department ruling paperwork. Not that it's your fault, but there's been too much paperwork and not enough legal work. The chicken comes before the egg. Well, promises. A private room in any hospital the girl chooses. Better food, special nurse. Go right on. A liberal clothing allowance for the girl after the baby is delivered. And some money for a fresh start. Well, Major, what's so bad about that? Nobody gets hurt. Well, because, Dowd, they are just promises with a catch to them, obviously. Yes, and here's something you evidently don't realize. No girl ever emotionally releases her baby. Before, she may think she doesn't want it. Afterwards, Two weeks after. Major Ross, are you making an official charge that this woman is a front for a baby brokerage ring? No, I am not charging that she's a front. I am personally charging that she is a baby broker. But the girls go to her of their own free will. That's a technicality. They don't know what they're getting into. It's a question of whether a girl in that state of mind is competent to make a decision. With these people, there are no restrictions. The only qualification needed for getting a child is money. It's not like a licensed adoption home. It's the worst kind of slavery, man. For a price, anybody can buy a human being. Exactly. Why, if this girl hadn't found out about the death of her sister and the missing baby, not an eyebrow would have been raised. You said if we did the legwork that you'd move in. Mark, that'd mean some girl endangering herself. I'll do it. No, Dottie. I don't want you to go into this with any false illusions, Miss Jensen. You'll be in a certain amount of danger. I understand. We'll give you all the protection we can, but... It's all right. You see, I want to do it. Dowd, Bren, this calls for a stakeout detail. Stakeout is a police term meaning trap. The teeth of the trap are well concealed. In the window of the home, a district attorney's investigator. At his elbow, a recording machine with hidden microphones ready to pick up any information that could be used as evidence. In a nondescript truck across the street, a plainclothesman, the handyman of the detail. Around the corner in a garage taken over for the purpose are three scout cars manned by detective personnel trained for automotive shadowing. In a convertible parked like any romantic couple ending a date are a newspaper man and a girl. 
waiting for another kind of rendezvous to begin. I figured there's a time to stand still and a time to move ahead. That's what you figure, is it? As far as I'm concerned, we ought to lay low for a while. Well, now you're giving advice. Did you know Mrs. Donner is figuring on taking care of more girls? That's a business. What happened to those two you were supposed to be watching? I... I got tied up with something else. Yeah. Dakota, did Mrs. Donner tell you who that girl is I'm tagging? Sure. She's a plant. A stooge for the newspaper guy. She's a sister of the dame you took care of for Mrs. Donner. Her name's Considine, too. Who said I took care of anyone? Forget I said it. I can't, because you might say it again. You know too much, and you talk too much. Not when I'm involved. And I'm in this up to my neck. Maybe deeper than that. Who told you to go messing around the Spencers? Well, I... I know what's going on. That's how I stay alive in this business. I just called them up and asked them if they'd change the Considine baby for another kid. Why? You going in for social work now? Or are you starting your own, Sally Ann? I'm just doing what I think is best for all of us. If this girl starts kicking up too much dust, we can buy her off by giving her back her sister's kid. Any kid would do the trick, if we need a trick. Carrick, I don't like you butting in. I was only trying There's to... There's a rumor going around town that I'm getting soft. Whenever that happens, I always cut a couple of throats just to prove a point. Now, look, Dakota, Who I... Who do you think would miss him, Hoppy? Nobody. You look like a good candidate if you don't keep your nose where it belongs. All right. No need to get tough. I'll do what I'm told. I'm telling you to mind your own business. Okay. Keep in touch. Yeah. Yeah, I will. You'd better... Chase. Do you think she'll show up, Mark? Quien sabe. It's waiting's the worst part, isn't it? Not for me. Oh, what a way to make a living. Parked every night with a beautiful girl. <laughs> Tell me something about Beaverbrook. Not that I believe there is any such place. Oh, it's there, all right. What's the population then, counting the beavers? About uh, 5,000. Mm -hmm. Not many boyfriends to choose from in town that side. Well, there's always been enough to go round. See. You know, I uh, I don't think you'd look good with a small town boy. No? No. What you need is a city feller to sort of show you off. <laughs> Where are you from originally, Mark? I'm afraid you're going to ask that. Ash Fork, Kansas. Yes, but it's, it's mostly worn off. And uh, how big is Ash Fork? Three ash trees, one fork. It's up to Dottie Jensen now. Keep your fingers crossed. Oh, young ladies, good evening. Hello. I'd like to give each of you a little Bible. Would you? Thank you. Mrs. Uh... My dear, names are not important. You see, I represent a religious organization. Yes, ma'am. We also take care of children and find nice homes for them quickly. Of course, on the other hand, if you want to keep the child yourself, it can be arranged. Keep it. I don't want it. Oh, my dear, please, please, don't cry. I'm here to help you. If you like, you can leave with me right now and we'll send back for your clothes. Our organization has a lovely home. But how can I? I owe so much money already. We take care of that. You don't have a worry. And you can feel certain that your child will be placed with people of unquestioned character. Come. SSC 1 to 3, roll them. SSC 2 and 3, take positions. 
SSC-1, tag Black L, license number 3, call 3670. Mark, she'll see us. Friend in the cab will romance the heavies. Let's give a lift to the law. SSC-1, tailing Black L, approaching underpass near Torrance. SSC-3, waiting. Over. SSC-2 at Brandon. Over. Take a stenographic transcription of this record. SSC-1, turn off now. C-2, take over. SSC-3, proceed to cutoff point. SSC-2 check, picking up Black L at Brandon. SSC-3 to Baby, Black L at destination. 330 Bula Drive, repeat, 330 Bula Drive, standing by, contact. What's the code book on 330 Bula Drive? Baby has 330 Bula Drive, full detail Bye. deploy, SSC 3 Park, hold house in view. Not bad, it checks with the license tag and her name is Mrs. Leona Donner. You make a point, you have a central eye bureau? Right. Make sheet shows no police record. Yes. This looks like us. With this ring, I do thee warn. I know. No slip-ups or Mrs. Donner will come between us. Not so fast. What about the references? We'll get to someone who knows her very well. By tomorrow night, we'll have a letter of introduction to Mrs. Donner. We have to go to the penitentiary to get it. Miss Considine, can you act like a married woman? I think so. Uh, Mark, you try to look like a respectable businessman. How do they look? A white shirt, neat suit, and uh, the socks match. I'll go to a costume and get outfitted. Take my word for it. Things are getting tighter and tighter. Me too. All right, kid about it if you want to, but things aren't being handled right. Mrs. Donner does my thinking for me. I hope she thinks it's something real funny. Answer the door, Harry, and put on your butler skirt. Okay. I hear you've been talking to Dakota. I'm sure popular. Everybody knows everything about me. And you've been doing an awful lot of talking out of turn, first with the Spences and now with Dakota. I've got a neck I'm awfully fond of. Well, don't stick it out then. If I could get a couple of grand, I'd clear the town for a while. You might sell your mother. It's the only thing you haven't tried. I mean it. I need the money and I need a rest. You couldn't get bus fare to the corner out of me. It might be handy not to have me around. It might. At that. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Moss, they say they got an appointment. Keep this out of sight. Fine woman, Mrs. Daniels. I haven't seen her for so long. But she always did recommend the nicest people. Thank you, Mrs. Donner. Well, Mrs. Daniels suggested that I bring all our papers just to expedite matters, so I've brought the marriage license. And never I... mind the red tape. I'm delighted to have you. Oh. A home is never complete without a child. Would you care for something to drink? Oh, uh, no, no thanks. I, I can't. Wall Street lining. Uh... <laughs> of course, you'll have something. No, thank you. No, no, we're on a wagon bill for two. I don't drink myself, but I like to be tolerant. Uh, yes, indeed. As I was saying, Mrs. Uh... Moss. My dear, you'd make a perfect mother. 
Haven't I seen you somewhere before? I hardly think so. The ladies' club or the women's auxiliary? No, no, I hardly think that's probable, Mrs. Donner. As you know, we're visitors in town, and maybe it was Palm Beach this past winter. No. I've been so busy. Yes, yes, I'm sure you have. And now, uh, not to take up too much of your time, when can we expect to uh, adopt a baby? Well, we have a waiting list, but we possibly could make some arrangement. We'll pay anything, Mrs. Donner. I do have a young lady upstairs now. Oh, we'd, uh, we'd be very grateful. The girl chosen will register at the hospital in your wife's name. Oh. In my name? Yes. Your name will be on the birth certificate as a child's mother. Well, that's very clever. Thank you. This way, we avoid the bothersome details of a legal adoption. I wonder if we could see the mother. I think I'd feel more secure. Certainly, my dear. This is one of the many advantages we have over the other adoption homes. Great. She's gonna show someone through tonight. Can't we lay low for five minutes? Oh, you seem kind of nervous. You'd be too if you had any sense. I only let certain people call me dumb. I know, you told me. I hear she's bringing in a batch of kids from out of the state. What do you know about that? I know it ain't none of your business. Thank you, Miss Jensen. Good night. Good night. She's very nice looking. Yes. It ought to be a beautiful baby. Just going down the stairs. I'll take a look. You stay put. You got us in enough trouble. Yeah. Polly, stand off. I'll lock the door. I'd be very happy to give you a check now, Mrs. Donner, and close the deal. I'm sorry. These money matters are always so embarrassing. We prefer cash. Oh, well, uh, well, I have some money with me. I have $500. Well, I could give you that on account. We're staying at the Presidential Hotel, and later I can send the balance over. That will be satisfactory. Oh, thank you. You can't imagine how much we appreciate this, Mrs. Donner. Well, thank you. In my work, there's such deep satisfaction. I should be uh, calling you within 24 hours. Presidential Hotel. Good night to you, both of you. Good night, Good night. Mr. I says once you got us in enough trouble. Quiet. You spying on your case in this couple. You must be getting sloppy with your references. That was the consident girl and the reporter. Oh, I thought her voice reminded me of someone. Get out the back way, Harry, and see if the house is being watched. Now they know a little bit more. Did they see you? No. Good. They probably mocked down all the serial numbers. I don't like the way things are going. You never do. I want to get out. You'll stay here until I speak to Dakota. No, dead as a morgue. Hey, where are you going? Mrs. Donner sent me to do something. Ask her. I will. In a vacant house across the street, another meeting had been arranged for Mark and Paula. So that's the setup. They registered the girl under the name of the couple buying the baby. Mm hmm. It's a neat trick. Means that Mary could have been registered under any one of the five names that I have here. That's Kelly, Spence, Korchak, Rabin, and Trent. Doubt have all five of those women brought in tomorrow with their husbands. One of those nurses at the hospital must have been lying. Yeah, sure, but which one? Oh, that's just routine from now on. How about Dottie Jensen? Oh, she's in no danger, as long as they still want the baby and they're not suspicious. Come on, we can get out of here. Are you sure you pulled it off? Well, we're up for an Oscar next year for our performance. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go on back to your hotel and wait for her to call you. And let us know the minute anything breaks. Why would I keep it a secret? I rented a bungalow cabana for you. You're posing as a wealthy couple who's costing the taxpayers 25 bucks a day. Don't I know it? Part of those taxes are mine. We've come a long way since Ash Fork and Beaverbrook. Boy. 
I was in the pool room. Could only see me now. What's the matter? I hated to leave Dottie in that place. Oh, she'll be all right. Mark. Mrs. Donner had Mary killed, didn't she? Yeah, looks that way. When she comes up for trial, everything about Mary will have to be brought out, won't it? You wouldn't want Donna to get away with it, would you? I don't know. Maybe I would if it would make it any easier on the baby. People forget. By the time she's growing up, nobody will remember a thing about it. Maybe. I keep wondering how Mary would feel about it. It's out of our hands now. Dottie's over there taking a big chance for you. Police have been called in. I don't suppose you could keep Mary's name out of it. Mrs. Donna goes to trial. I won't be the only newspaper man there. Good night, Mark. Why don't you come down to the bar and have a nightcap? No, thanks. Good night. Good night. I'm sorry to tell you this, Mrs. Spence, but it looks as though the whole thing has gone sky high. I don't understand. Somebody's gotten onto the deal. We're all about to get a call from the police. But Mrs. Donner assured me it was perfectly safe. It's too bad, Mrs. Spence. There must have been a leak somewhere. But what can we do? I couldn't give up the baby now. She's almost like our own. That's why I called you. I know how you must feel. I have a few connections around town. I might be able to quiet things down. Yes, Mr. Carrick. Please, you must. Of course, it'll take money. How much? Oh, a couple of thousand anyway. But we couldn't possibly... Why don't you let me talk to Mr. Spence? He's away on a business trip. But I know we don't have the money, Mr. Carrick. You know, you're in this as deep as any of us. I can't help it. We simply don't have it. Maybe we could raise some. I'll need it tonight. But that's absolutely impossible. All right, Mrs. Spence. All right. I may call you later. Mr. Carrick, please. Good night. Mr. Carrick! Mr. Carrick, please. Presidential Hotel. Mrs. Moss. Just a moment, please. Sitko there with you? Of course not. Are you alone? Yes. How badly do you want your sister's baby back? I'll do anything. Maybe we can make a deal. I know you were at Mrs. Donner's tonight. Are you there? Yes. You're not to talk to anyone, do you understand? But I understand. I'll know if you cross me because I'm having you watched. Oh, you needn't worry about that. What about the baby? going to cost you. I have about $1,500 in traveler's checks. Get them cashed at the desk there. Bring them with you. Where? I'll need about an hour. I'll call you back. All right. Now get this through your head. I'm really desperate, so don't try any tricks. I won't. If you do, I'll take it out on the kid. I said I wouldn't. Please don't hurt her. She'll be all right. If you behave. Carrick expect to stay healthy keeping such late hours. Well, talk. You don't pay me to talk. I don't like waiting for people. What do we do now? We just keep driving around the block. We've been around three times already. Please do as I tell you. Okay.
Stop. All right, hurry up. That okay? Yeah, sure. Beat it. Where is she? I'm taking you to her. Did you bring the money? Yes. Is she all right? She's fine. Where was she? Don't ask too many questions. I'm sticking my neck out a mile each way in this thing. It's worth every penny. I'm not complaining. Uh, well, here we are. I'll be quiet when we go in. until tomorrow morning. Don't try to get out. This place is owned by friends of mine. They'll tell you when you can leave. Worse than that for Mrs. Donna. Let's go. You'd better stop talking, Terry. I don't know anything about it. Sure, you always go around with fifteen hundred dollars in your pocket. Mrs. Spence called, Carrick. We know everything that you've been up to tonight. I tell you, I don't know anything about it. Stop that noise! I told you I had somebody else here. Now be quiet. Stop marking him up. What's another mark? He can be a hit and run victim. Be realistic. Where's the child? And where did you get the money? Let him talk, stupid. The money's mine. I've been saving it. I was going to clear out of town. You should have started sooner. Hold up his arm, Hoppy. This is a little game we used to play after Sunday school. Stay here. What is it, Dottie? Mrs. Donner, it's time. We'll get back into bed and I'll call an ambulance. I'm sorry. I just got up to turn on the light. Well, that's all right. You stay in bed. I have a patient in the next room. Here comes the jackpot. Truth the consequence. All right. I took your kid. Where is it? I gave it to the Considine girl. She gave me the money. I parked them in a boarding house. 4211 Argyle. What room? Eight. Anything else? That's all there is to it. Believe me. We'll see. Leave him alone. He told you. Why, Harry, we're just having a little good, clean fun. Crazy? Yes, crazy enough to find out where the kid is. Harry, watch Carrick. Come on, you two. Looks like he won't never come up. We have to get over there right away. We can get rid of the body later. Our only chance is to pin the whole thing on Carrick. Have the girl and the baby found in his car. The baby, too? You're throwing away good money. I'm paying the bills. All right, so Carrick tricked up the suicide. And in the same place. Exactly, and we'll follow in my car to see that you do as good a job as you did the last time. This is Donner. Right, Dottie. It has to happen now. So you'll break even. Operator, Bimini Hospital, emergency. Well, anybody got a match? Hello? Nurse Sully, please. Yeah? Mark, just got a break. 
break in the case. We won't have to wait any longer. The Spence baby was kidnapped tonight. Who? Spence. It's one of the women on your list. She's in our office now. Just giving us a full confession about buying the Constantine baby. What do you mean the baby was kidnapped? I don't know how that figures into it, but we've got enough now to move in on the whole gang. We're going over to Downers. You want to be there? Sure. All right, I'll give you ten minutes to dress and then start. Meet us there and hurry up. Is everything set? All set. We'll leave in ten minutes. Just keep it quiet, honey. You better do as they say, Miss Considine. Once they get started, it's pretty hard to stop them. And the baby might get hurt. What do you want? Just come along with us. And we'll see if we can't straighten out this little misunderstanding. But Quietly, I said. We don't want to wake up the neighbors. You've got to get me a telephone. I sent for one, Mrs. Moss, but I don't think you'll have time to place a call. Somewhat ice cream, lobster, tomatoes, strawberries. This one, a phone call. Who did you want, Mrs. Moss? I'll get it. The district attorney, Chief McRae, please. Get that telephone away from her. She's in no condition to be making a call. Well, after all, Sally. This is a private case, and I'm in charge. Now take the telephone out of here. But please... Pardon me. Hiya, Mark. Nobody home. I think I got a reason for the kidnapping. Carrick must have been planning to double cross the rest. He stole a baby and they made a deal with Paula. Does she have any money? Oh, some, I don't know. Carrick isn't planning anything. He's in there dead. Dead? Mm hmm. Beaten to death. Well, I think you figured it right. How about Paula? Not a sign of her. Or the Jensen girl. They must have taken them along when they decided to beat it. Well, come on, let's get going. Now, where? I got a call out on Donna's car. You think of anything else? Yeah, yeah, the woman, the nurse at the hospital, the one that lied to us. All right, it's better than doing nothing. Now, uh, you stay here until homicide gets here. Okay. It was Miss Sully took care of Mrs. Spence. Would you tell her we'd like to see her? I'm afraid she can't be disturbed. She's on a private case. We'll have to put someone else on there. We want to talk to her right away. Send Miss Sully down. I'm sorry, you can't see her now. Her patient is just ready for the delivery room. Do you mind if we wait? What's that patient's name? Moss. Dottie. This trip take us to Miss Sully. We're arresting her. Meet you in the car, Mark. Dottie. Dottie, what happened? I tried to reach you. Carrie. They forced him to tell where Paula. They're gonna kill her and the baby and try to make it look like suicide. Where? They said the same place they took Mary. Thanks. You take good care of her. You'll be all right. All right.
all rigged. We can leave. We're not leaving here until the whole affair is finished. I'm not being paid by the hour. You're not being paid until I'm sure. Staff 44 to Control 1, requesting assistance. Paradise Hills Unfinished Country Club Development, Code 3. I don't like waiting. Only 10 minutes more? Didn't I tell you no smoking? I needed your deposition to prepare my case. Of course. House for visitors. Oh, come in. Hello, Paula. Mark. Well, see you've already read it. Once again, you've crept into the headlines hanging on my coattails. I'll uh, sacrifice a small stake in your honor tonight. How's the baby? Well, he hasn't started to talk yet. 
but he looks like he might have something pretty bright to say when he does. Dottie, I don't have to tell you how no, much. No, you don't. How's Mary's baby? We're looking for a handsome young couple to adopt her. Oh, I'll look around the room and see if I can find one. <laughs> Come in. Hiya, McRae. Girls? Congratulations, Sitko. A nice little piece of work. Well, if you say so, it must be true. A little note for you from our boss. Uh, you and I may be working together now, Sitko. I've been promoted. Great. Oh, now, just a minute. Why, he can't do this to me. I've been working night and day on this thing. I got two weeks off coming. Well, you'll never win the Pulitzer Prize that way, Sitko. Now, you shut up and get back and tell him I'm leaving on my honeymoon. And what better way could you spend it than working? Why, you little bit. Well, there goes our honeymoon trip. What do we do now? Well, start at the bottom. Put on your cast iron stomach and we'll spend our honeymoon at Eddie's. Interesting people, these small town girls. But whatever the time or wherever the place, this did happen in a city which may be your home.